You are now viewing Prophet H. Walker and True Life Pentecost Church. Those that are viewing and seeking after righteousness, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. They're trying to very cleverly hold to a basic foundation of the church, yet compromise the very integrity of the church. And you can't have it both ways. Brothers and sisters, hear me. You can't have it both ways. It's God's way or no way at all. Now take note in the book of Titus. to the sanctified word of truth in Jesus sweet and precious name now Lord there might be someone sick here again we ask you anyone with a tumor dry it up right now somebody you're in way of you too that blood condition we command it to dry up right now diabetes looks here have no part here hallelujah heart trouble get on away from here can't we bind you bind this God it's yes, not of God. Yes. Do you yes, he and God has more power than the devil. Yes, we bind every enemy affliction, yes, every enemy disease. Yes, not of God. Yes, and we cast it yes, far away. Hallelujah. Let on this loose here. Yes, Praise God. God gave us a spirit of yes, peace, of a sound mind. Yes, Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Jesus' name. Anger yes, is loose here right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Somebody pray. For me and the other mind, so good time and pray for me.
priceless and matchless name of Jesus, the one true God, according to the scripture, and the Lord who made the worlds. And Genesis 1 and 1 says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Amen. John's Gospel 1 and 10 it says, He was in the world, and the world was made by Him. Yes. So again, I testify for the record that the same Jehovah God of the Old Testament is the same Jesus Christ of the New Testament. Amen. We can only have one creator, Malachi 2 and 10. Have we not all one Father? Hath not one God created us? Uh, I want to uh, just give a brief uh, teaching tonight. And uh, also, I want to make mention of this uh, love offering again from, uh, this from daughter Bianca. Amen. $60. Now, I think she just works part-time. But nevertheless, she's making a sacrifice to give. Amen. According to how God has prospered her to give. And again, I thank the Lord for the third Sunday offering. Amen. Amen. I believe it totaled over $5,000. Thank you, Lord. Give God a hand, please. Now give yourself a hand, please. Again, I say, church, you can't be God-giving, no matter how you try. And I'm so thankful for those who have made a commitment to obey the Scripture and to follow God in spirit and in truth. And I want to say, also, uh, I don't know of any who may have or is receiving an income and not sharing anything Amen. with the church. I don't know. But God knows everything. There's nothing hid from him. Amen. And no matter how uh, that person may attempt to scheme or plot or hide money, Amen. you can never hide anything from God. Amen. And your soul salvation is far more important than any $20, $100, or $1,000 you may hide and think that you are accomplishing something in your goal. Amen. It's not about your goal. Yes. It's not about your dream. It's not about your vision. Yes. Right. It's about the goal of God, the dream of God, and God's eternal kingdom. Yes. Nothing matters on this earthly journey but the kingdom of God. Yes. And the kingdom of God must first dwell down in your heart. Yes. And shores I'm here. Come on. Hear me close. Yes. And I say to my YouTube viewers, Whatever is done in secret, Amen. God sooner or later will reveal and uncover that. And where will you be when trouble comes your way? And you cry out to God and God remembers you for your hidden agenda in serving him. Nothing again can matter but what we do for God and his kingdom. Never forget that. And never try to uh, emulate someone who you know is not rooted and grounded in the faith. You need to set your example on those who have set an example for you. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. He didn't tell you to follow Christ. He said, follow me. Because you don't know how to follow Christ. Right, except you follow the apostle. That's right, Prophet. Amen. We today are faced with mountains that come against us in a diverse ways. The multiple facet church or churches that have been established from the 1950s through the advent of tele television and the televangelists mm -hmm. have created all this mass confusion that you see in so-called Christianity today. It has divided and split the church in so many different ways. But the Bible says Christ is not divided. Yeah. If Christ is not divided, how can his church be divided? So again, uh, we need to understand the importance of true light and the importance of your calling 
and from the least of these yes. is so important to the kingdom. Whether you sit on the mountain or whether you sit in the last pew, right. you are important to yes, the kingdom yes, of God yes. because yes. God chose you, separated you from the world, and brought you into holiness. Yes. Don't turn your back and leave God and don't try to scheme and plot. Amen. 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 The church is all you have. Amen. And don't cut off the hand that feeds you. Right. Uh, I called uh, Bishop Ellis today from that Amen. Uh, the track that was being yeah. passed. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he said that he's not having a debate uh, because he knew I had him somewhat in a corner. Uh, All right. Amen. He said, we're just having a discussion as to whether or not uh, how we can deal with, the way he worded, how we can deal with our homosexual members in the church. So I told him in a very polite way, I said, but I thought the Bible already dealt with that. Uh, let, let me get you Titus uh, chapter 3. What they're trying to do they're trying to very cleverly yes, yes. hold to a basic foundation of the church, yet compromise the very integrity of the church. And you can't have it both ways. Brothers and sisters, hear me. You can't have it both ways. It's God's way or no way at all. Now, take note in the book of Titus. I want to go to chapter 3. Amen. Jump right into verse 9. Amen. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law. Now again, the law clearly established uh, the principles of good and evil, Amen. or right and wrong. And it clearly establishes in both Testaments that God will not accept sodomy or lesbian behavior. Amen. It's clear. Amen. And we've shared scripture upon scripture. Hold your place right there and let's Go to Jude and jump right in at verse 7. Amen. And we're going to come right back to the book of Titus. Yes. For even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner giving The word them Sodom, or rather the word Sodom me, yeah. is taken from the Bible text concerning Sodom. And the word Sodomite is taken from the word uh, Sodomy, which is to commit an act of male-to-male uh, -male sex or sex with an animal. The Bible uh, says they that do such things according to the Levitical law shall surely be put to death. Amen. And the very next verse says, and if man should lie with the beast of the field, mm -hmm. which means an animal, he shall surely be put to death. So, uh, when the dictionaries first had their freedom and the, were not afraid of the lesbian coalition, right. they stated clearly that uh, homosexuality was a sect, or rather sodomy, yeah. was the act of sex with a man-to-man -man sex or sex with an animal. Amen. Now, the person who commits sodomy the Bible calls a sodomite. Right. Amen. And it says, A sodomite shall not be once named among the men of Israel. Amen. Now that's very clear. And Paul brought it out very clearly, even going to the in-depthness of the natural law of God in the Roman letter chapter 1. Amen. So we first must understand, brothers and sisters, there is a right way and a wrong way, and God's way is the right way. Yes, and is. anyone who yes. contends against God's word or his law or his uh, uh, quality that he has established for the church, then that person is in error. God is never in error. Amen. So again, when we understand this, we get ourselves rooted and grounded, and we don't fear nothing that the enemy can bring against us. Uh, what I'm against is these big churches is compromise. Yes. Yes. And we got on the subject of uh, a big preacher's compromise. And I told him about uh, uh, John Hagee and uh -huh. that Pastor Warren yes. in the south, southwestern part of the United States. 
and I, I got uh, told him about his friend T.D. Jakes. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, you know, he made a statement that David and Jonathan were, uh, in fact, uh, sodomites, and that Ruth and Naomi had a lesbian relationship. He said, oh, no, 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 that can't be true. He, he would never make a statement like that. I said, well, why don't you go to YouTube and look it up for yourself? He said, well, I'll be shocked. I said, well, get prepared to be shocked. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I had Elder Lansing look up the, uh, the pa passage where T.D. Jakes had made these statements yeah. and emailed it to him, attention, Hallelujah. Bishop Ellis. He said, I'm going to get on YouTube right now and try to find it. So I made it easy for him to find it. <laughs> now get me back to the book of Titus. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm in Jude. I want to go right to, uh, uh, did you read verse 7? Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh. Now, if you identify with fornication and strange flesh, strange flesh, obviously the word strange means different. Amen. Now, what's he talking about? He already mentioned fornication is wrong. Right. Now, he said going after strange flesh or a different type of sex is wrong. Now, he previously set it up by Sodom and Gomorrah. So we see the connection with Sodom and strange flesh to let you know he's talking about sodomy. Yes. Amen. Or sex with a woman and you ain't married. Amen. Holds in the same context. And he made mention, the bishop did, about, uh, well, you know, we have to deal with people who smoke and drink liquor and tell lies and steal. I said, but yeah, we don't hold that in the same context as we do a violation of God's ordinance concerning the male creation. People can sin and sin every day. But to call God a liar concerning male and female, then you're stepping overboard. Amen. You're stepping out of bounds. Amen. Now, even though both of them are, all those I mentioned are willful acts of sin. Yeah. But there is, when you began to call God a liar concerning uh, the sexual gender, yeah. And you say God made me a, a sissy. No, no, you, 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 you be, you be better off going robbing ninety nine banks. Amen. Amen. Because one thing about the act of uh, sodomy and lesbian behavior, you've got to understand first that wasn't nobody born that way. That's right. And to say God made me like this. You directly call him a liar. And there's not nobody who ever robbed or stole didn't know it was wrong. Amen. But when you got to the act of, of sodomy and lesbian behavior, they don't even know that they're wrong. Amen. If you say God made me this way and you've got the nerve to go to a church and make a statement like that, right oh, goodness, come on, come on. you're blaspheming God. Amen. You're taking Romans and throwing it away. You're taking a Jude chapter, a verse 7, and you're throwing that away. Uh, back up to verse 3 again. The love when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered Now again, he said, earnestly contend for the faith once delivered. The faith once delivered is recorded in the Bible. And homosexuality or lesbian and sodomite behavior is in the Bible. Amen. So we got to contend earnestly for the instructions God has given us concerning the subject matter. Now, read, watch verse 4. There are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. In other words, they came in the church knowing that your church was against this type of behavior. Amen. Because it said they were ordained to this condemnation. In other words, they were preachers who knew that uh, Sodom and Lesbian behavior was wrong. Amen. Read. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. They took grace and changed the dimension of grace and told you it's all right because we're under grace. Amen. Now, 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 now get me uh, Romans chapter 6. Uh, we're going to jump right into verse 1, and then we're going to jump in to uh, finish that, that, that passage in Titus. Amen. Amen. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. 
How shall we that are dead to sin you live? You can't live in sin because somebody told you you're under grace. Mm -hmm. Now, we are under grace. But again, grace is the principle God used to save you when you couldn't save yourself. Grace saved you when you were yet in sin. But when you have been converted, when you have been water baptized and your Adamic sins have been washed away uh, 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 for the record, for your sins have been remitted for the record, you don't go back and live in sin again. Amen. Shall we continue in sin because of grace? The apostle said, God forbid. Amen. Same apostle wrote chapter 6 who wrote chapter 10. All right. So we have to understand, brothers and sisters, the principles of right and wrong are being deleted, compromised, twisted, and changed every single day by these mega churches. And they act like they don't know uh, what they're doing that's wrong. To have uh, any type of conversation, I don't care whether you call it uh, a dialogue Amen. or if you want to call it a debate. You don't want to call it a debate because the Bible speaks about against debating. Amen. But to have a dialogue about whether or not or how to treat sodomites and lesbians in our congregation, Amen. do we put them out? Give me Titus. Amen. Uh, we're in chapter 3. Jump right into verse uh, 10. A man that is a heretic after the first and second admonition reject. A man who's a heretic. A heretic is someone who's not going to believe. That's right. Now it's talking about someone in church. Amen. Reject such a one. Put him out. Now he asked me a question. What do we do? Do we put them out? No, you teach them. Amen. Them the sin rebuke before all that others may fear. Amen. You can't have homosexuals, lesbian sodomites in the same congregation and everything is all right. You can't have them singing in the choir, play, playing the organ and uh, 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 trying to minister. Amen. Amen. How are you going to do that? Amen. You've got a sinner abject who is unrepentant coming in the midst of the congregation to do what? To tear down the moral concept right. and the moral principle God has already established in his word. Amen. There's Amen. nothing to debate. There's nothing to discuss. Amen. There's no discussion. Amen. It's already been discussed and it's already settled Amen. by the word of God. Yeah. After the second warning, reject such a word. Yeah. Put him out. Yeah. Praise God. Now they really put themselves out. But this thing, this movement is so strong, brothers and sisters, hear me. They got so much boldness about them, they will actually come to the church and try to change the come church. On now, come on. Glory, hallelujah. Amen. But if they come into true light, they're going to repent Amen. and get right. They might come in twisting and twitching when they walk, but when they leave, they're going to walk straight. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Truth will set you free. Amen. But you have to be receptive to the truth when it comes. Amen. Never contest and fight against the word of God. Amen. Because all you're doing is bringing upon yourself swift destruction. And I said don't be influenced by any other person who is trying to tell you something against what I'm teaching you. Amen. Because when I teach you, I go right to the Word of God. Amen. 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 Ain't none, nothing in this Bible says what, what thus saith Prophet Walker. Amen. But the Bible says, Harlem's Illustrated Bible Dictionary, the word prophet means one who prophesies or speaks for God. It ain't talking about uh, going around saying, well, you know it's supposed to rain. Uh, Sunday Lord told me to tell you it's going to rain next week. <laughs> so what? <laughs> What's that got to do with going to heaven? Amen. So don't get prophet mixed up out of its proper context. Amen. Yes, prophet does mean to foretell, but it also means to retell. Right. <laughs> foretell a story or an event, but also to retell Amen. an event. Amen. As long as you're speaking what thus saith the Lord. Amen. Uh, one person uh, I saw over there, a television, he said, the prophet coming to town 
and he's 85% accurate. That ain't accurate enough. Bible says if a prophet prophesying is wrong, stone him. Kill him. 99 and a half won't do. You've got to be real in this. Praise the Lord. Let's hold to the precepts of the Bible without change. Let's love each other. Give me a, a, a Malachi 3 and 16. Let's love each other and be there for each other. Let's not tear down each other. The devil already trying to do that. And again, I want to say, don't ever think that you're going to use the church as some have done. And once you get on your feet, mm -hmm. then you're going to move to your apartment. <laughs> While someone in true light was making these sacrifices and taking care of you. Amen. Right. Amen. Paying the electric bill, the water bill. Amen. Transportation bill. Amen. And you know, you don't fill the bus up with water. Come on now, come on. Amen. Amen. Now you ask the average person, well, uh, yeah, you put gas in. Uh, uh, well, that's what the church is supposed to do. But where do you think the church gets the gas money from? Amen. Amen. Somebody making a sacrifice. Don't, hear me somebody, don't use the church of God. Don't have no secret bank account. No secret credit card. Because it's not secret in the sight of God. Amen. It may be secret to me, but it really ain't must not be too much secret because God's caused me to go in this direction. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And the truth shall make you free. <laughs> How many love the truth of God's word? Thank you. Well, I think we covered just about everything. Love Talk Radio.